And if you are such a fucking loser with no self-respect, you drop him because he treats you like shit. <laughs> Fellas, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're talking about a growing trend that's causing quite the stir. Modern women can't stop fuming as men are walking away from dating and relationships. We'll dive into why men are choosing to step back, the frustrations it's creating, and what it means for the future of dating. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any updates. Let's jump right in. Okay, so a little while ago, I did a video, and in that video, I said about how lots of men are not in love or haven't been in love and have lied about it. And a bunch of you girls were saying, what do you mean by that? Like, what is this about? And I don't see many videos on this on social media, especially on TikTok. And something I don't think a lot of women realise, which is kind of a harsh truth to accept, um, and I think if a lot of them were honest with you, they would uh, tell you this, they'd admit this. But lots of men either haven't been in love or are not in love with their partners. And I'm saying this from speaking to lots of men. And the amount of men that have said to me, yeah, actually, I've never really been in love. I've just sort of said it because I thought it was the right thing to say. Or I said it because she told me. Or I said it because I thought that it would come eventually. The amount of men that have openly told me that they're married, but they've settled because they couldn't get the woman they wanted. Or they didn't get the woman because they set a standard the guy wasn't trying to reach or work for or work towards so he'd rather lose her and have somebody easier confirming the taxi cab theory um i know men that have been in love with women and they've got rid of them because they wasn't ready in time and then again taxi cab theory they've waited for somebody who is wanting the same things around the same time as them more strategy based rather than love based whereas lots of women they won't be ready for a relationship but they'll meet a guy they'll fall in love and they'll make it work lots of men they'll have the girl of their dreams but they won't be where they want to be in life so they'll get rid of her spend the whole life being heartbroken get of a woman they don't truly love waste her time and their own and be kind of like miserable but keep it together for the kids another thing a lot of women don't realize lots of men are in very unhappy relationships and marriages but only stay for the children thinking that that's somehow better even though your kids can pick up on it but that's a video for a different day when they're not been in love and the amount of men that I've dated and they've been like, yeah, I thought I was in love before, but actually I wasn't. Or men will lie and say stuff like, you know how often guys would be like, oh, I don't finish from below, so you try harder. Lots of men will be like, oh, I didn't love anyone till you. Because, because a lot of these men want you to feel special. That one's a lot rarer. Like most men are not going around being like, oh, I've never been in love until you. That's more like very narcissistic based, um, but it does happen. But there are lots and lots of men who don't know what love feels like. I know so many men that say, I, I don't know what it's like to be in love. Or I'll say to them, have you been in love? And they'll be like, I think so. And I'm like, it's a bit like an orgasm. If you don't know, you haven't. Um, and it's really sad. A lot of men are too scared to fall in love because they don't want to have that level of vulnerability because it means they could be hurt. So instead, they choose to be with women that they're either not going to fall in love with because it's safer. Um, or they was in love when they were younger and it ended and they got hurt. So they just decide to emotionally distance themselves as they get older. And... Out of all the men I've spoke to, I would say 70% of those men have told me they said I love you and they didn't mean it. They said I love you to a woman because she said it first or because they thought it would develop. Um, and unfortunately, as sad as it is, I'm not trying to be a, a negative Nelly and put a dampener on things, but there are lots of men that don't love their wives. Another reason why I like being single and wouldn't want to be with somebody unless we both equally loved each other. And I am very at peace with that decision because... As, as a woman, you know the amount of times where you go to bed stressing out as fuck. And most women I know that are stressed or in relationships, it's not worth it until you find somebody like you genuinely feel like you can make a go of things with. But yeah, a lot of men are very, very scared to be vulnerable. So don't even fall in love. And there are lots of men who lie and say they love you even when they don't. And I think that's really, really sad, but it's true. A lot of women out here are mistaking their obsession for love. It's not the same thing, but it's easy to see why they mix it up. Look, she genuinely thinks she's in love with the guy, but in reality, she's just obsessed. It's like a milder version of what you see in shows like you, where they get so wrapped up in the idea of being with someone that they convince themselves it's love. But what they're really doing is putting this guy on a pedestal, and that obsession becomes their driving force. And let's be real, obsession isn't healthy, and it's definitely not love. This is where a lot of women mess up. They chase this feeling, thinking it's some deep connection, when in reality, they're fixating on the idea of the guy, not the actual relationship. They're more in love with the fantasy than the reality, 
and that's where things go downhill. Meanwhile, men are over here keeping it simple. They're not chasing fantasies. They're looking for someone who makes their life easier. If you're cooking, cleaning, helping with the bills, and basically being a supportive partner, that's the kind of thing men value. Men don't need all the drama or these grand gestures of obsession. They want someone who's going to make their day-to-day -day life smoother. That's what a lot of women don't understand. Instead, too many women get caught up in unrealistic expectations, thinking that obsessing over a guy is the same as loving him. They get fixated on what they want him to be, instead of who he actually is. And when things don't pan out the way they imagined, it's all downhill from there. The blame here is solely on these women for not understanding the difference between love and obsession. They create these fantasies in their heads, and when reality doesn't match up, they're disappointed. But that's on them for not being able to see the situation for what it really is. Men, on the other hand, are straightforward. They're not asking for much. Just someone who makes life easier, brings peace, and can be a partner in the truest sense. If more women understood that, maybe they wouldn't find themselves stuck in these obsessive cycles, chasing after something that was never real to begin with. So I dated 50 guys in three years, and not only did it break my soul, but I wrote an article about it for Medium. It's a really fucking long article because it goes through each of the 50 guys, but I'm going to try and give you the TLDR. For a bit of backstory, when I started dating these guys, I had just come out of a year-long relationship with a really great guy who really cared about me, um, but our values just did not align on many, many things, and I just knew we had no future. So, But my guard was down because I'd just been in a trusting relationship, and I was not ready for what awaited me in the single world. So the first guy was someone I met in real life and my friend was dating his friend so they set us up and he seemed amazing at first. He was like a hopeless romantic who really wanted a relationship um, and we had like three really nice months until he just turned cold as fuck and turned out he was just a compulsive liar, um, emotionally unavailable, not over his ex, the mother of his child. Um, but I was already attached to him by that point, so I found it really hard to cut him off. And we had this whole push and pull thing for like nine months. And then eventually I cut him off for a year and then stupidly went back and the whole thing happened again. And all in all, it took me like two and a half, three years to get over this fucking guy. So we didn't get off to the best start. The next guy was somebody that I met on Tinder and we had a few nice dates until he ghosted me. There were massive red flags with him. He started trauma dumping on the first date, telling me, about how his dad used to beat him and his mum up and all sorts of bad things. Um, he eventually ghosted me, so that was the end of that anyway. But he did pop up a few years later and his life was still in chaos. Like His mum was recovering from cancer, his granddad was dying from cancer, and he told me that his ex and his best friend had just run off together. And he also told me that he was sleeping with his therapist because his therapist had tried to blackmail him. So yeah, this boy was just chaos and that one was never gonna go anywhere number three was a guy that i met on tinder and we went for a walk in the park um bearing in mind this was all in lockdown so our humor just did not gel on the day and it made the whole thing awkward he was really nice looking but again he was just another one that started trauma dumping on the first day like he told me how he'd been hospitalized for alcoholism and how his sister had all these gambling issues and had like been stealing money from the family and all of this stuff um and after our date he actually didn't speak to me for a few days so when he eventually did pop up i just used that as an excuse to be like nah we're not i don't want to go out again he actually popped up a whole year later as well and asked if i wanted to go out and i just said i wasn't dating the fourth guy he was somebody that i met on tinder and i did a facetime date with him because i decided to start vetting these men before i actually met them um and i was glad i did with him because on the facetime he told me that he doesn't have any friends and when I was like, oh, well, who do you hang out with? He went, oh, well, I just hang out with whatever whatever girl I'm dating. So yeah, that was massive red flags. So when he asked on a date, I just politely declined. The fifth guy was someone I met on Bumble. And I met him right as me and the first guy were ending for the first time. So I was like fucking heartbroken and probably shouldn't have been dating, to be honest. But this guy was like a really nice person and had his life together, it seemed. And it was just someone I, the kind of person I knew I should be dating. So I decided to give it a go. Um, the attraction wasn't really there because he was so nice. I was just hoping it would come. 
and the sexual attraction definitely was not there. Um, and he also was depressed and he used to make jokes about unaliving himself a lot. And my mental health wasn't the best at the time. So I didn't think that was that good for me. Um, but I think we dated for about three months and eventually we went on holiday. And soon as I went on that holiday, I knew I didn't want to be with him and I shouldn't have gone. And the whole thing was a massive mistake. And he also made some really dodgy comments about the whole Sarah Everard, Wayne Cousins case that put me off of him. So as soon as we got home, I ended things immediately on the grounds that we just didn't have a very good sexual connection, which he admitted was the case. And he turned around and was like, oh, we could just carry on sleeping together if you want. And I was just like, you're not really getting it. Um, but yeah, I feel bad for letting that one drag on as long as it did. But he was a nice guy and I really just wanted to, to give it a chance. But it just was not meant to be. Sixth guy was somebody I met in real life. I met him at West Ham Football Stadium um, and he came up and asked for my phone number and he was good looking so I gave it to him but then he kept calling me every night. He was calling me every Friday night at like two in the morning like, so clearly just trying to booty call me. Eventually we met up on a night that we were both out and he was just a huge coca-cola head and you could see he literally had coca-cola around the rings of his nostrils so um, I actually ended up blocking him. We actually reconnected like two years later because we kept matching on the apps and he was still a Coca-Cola head and only wanted to sleep with me. The seventh guy, I met him on Bumble. He had great banter, good looking, cute dog. So we used to walk his dog. We used to go to the same gym so we'd go and use the spa together. We had like three really lovely fun dates and then he literally started crying on my shoulder about his ex and I realised that he wasn't over her. And I also realised that he was sleeping with loads of different women. Um, so we became friends and he admitted to me that he slept with over a thousand women. Number eight, this was a guy I met on Tinder. I probably shouldn't have gone out with him because he was quite a bit younger than me. But we went on a really nice date. We went axe throwing. Um, and then on the date he told me that he was not looking for anything serious. So when he asked for another date and tried to kiss me, I just declined on both counts. Number nine was a guy I matched with on Tinder. We had a little FaceTime. He was Australian. Um, he was nice enough, but just you could tell neither of us were really feeling it and we did not speak again. Number 10 was a guy I met on Bumble. He was another guy who seemed nice enough and we went on a date to the pub. Um, and I thought he was a little bit rude because when we were chatting, he just kind of kept looking around the room and I was like, oh, am I boring you? Um, and when I pointed that out, he actually got really offended. <laughs> Um, anyway, clearly neither of us were bothered because we did not go out again. Number 11 was a guy I met on Bumble and it was probably the, one of the worst dates I've ever been on in my life. Um, he wasn't even my type, but he was massively on my case about going for a date. So I, I gave him a chance. Um, he asked me to meet him at the pub. Arsenal were playing. He told me him and his brother were going to be watching it. And then once it was over, we'd go for food. So I go and meet him. He's at the table watching Arsenal on his phone when I get there, he barely looks up from his phone, just says hi, and then goes back to it. <clears throat> the brother was there and started asking me questions like, oh, where have you come from? What do you do? Um, and the brother was like, oh, should I get you a drink? Brother goes off to get me a drink. And then I say to this guy, uh, you're in a bit of a bad mood. Should I just go home? And he's like, no, no, no. Like, once this finishes and we get food, I'll be fine. Anyway, so the match finishes. We're getting ready to go. And the brother's just standing there awkwardly. And I felt really bad because I'd actually chatted to the brother more than the guy. And I didn't even want to go for dinner with this guy at this point. So I said to the brother, I was like, well, you can come if you want. And I ended up going on a date with this guy and his brother. As we were chatting over Thai food, it transpired that the guy that I was going on a date with was on day three of a bender. He'd gone out with work on the Thursday and got fucked. They'd had a new baby born in the family on Friday and the pair of them had been drinking. And then Saturday morning, he'd started drinking early for the football. Um, we split the meal three ways at my date's request. Um, and then afterwards, he said, do you want to come for drinks with us? You can stay at mine tonight. And I said, no, thank you. Um, he actually messaged me a whole year later um, just to say that I looked hot in my WhatsApp photo and he did admit maybe bringing his brother on the date was not the best idea. Anyway, I'm running out of time now, so I'll have to do a part two. All right, so let's break this down. She's dated 50 guys in three years, and not one of them put a ring on it. At some point, you've got to ask, is it really the guys? 
or is the common denominator, her? Now, it's not unheard of to date around, especially when you're trying to figure out what you want. But 50? In just three years? That's a sign that maybe the problem isn't the men. Maybe it's her standards, her approach, or even how she's presenting herself. It's not just about being selective. It's about understanding what you bring to the table and why you keep ending up in the same spot over and over again. And here's the thing. Most men are out here looking for something real. They want someone who brings value to their lives. Someone who's not just looking for the next best thing or treating, dating like some sort of endless shopping spree. At some point, it stops being about finding the right one and starts looking more like she's just ticking off boxes with no real understanding of what a lasting relationship requires. The fact that not one of these 50 guys thought she was worth committing to says something. Men don't wife up someone just because they look good or can hold a conversation for a few weeks. Men commit to women who bring stability, peace, and partnership into their lives. If she's going through guys like she's scrolling through a dating app, then she's likely not offering that. Let's not sugarcoat it. If 50 guys didn't stick around, the issue might be that she's chasing after what she wants without considering what these men actually need. The whole narrative of women setting these high expectations while offering very little in return is a huge problem today. It's not about being the prize. It's about being someone who's worth the investment of time, energy, and emotions. So, at this point, it's not a coincidence that none of these men committed. Maybe it's time for her to reflect, because continuing down this path is just going to lead to more disappointment. Men value women who are serious, who aren't playing the field endlessly, and who genuinely want to build something long-term. Fifty guys later, and not one saw her as that? The answer isn't in finding guy number 51. It's in rethinking her entire approach to relationships. Blaming men or claiming they aren't stepping up doesn't hold weight anymore. If she wants to be wifed up, maybe it's time to start acting like a wife instead of someone just passing time. Can someone explain this to me? Do you know people who struggle with monogamy that are always unfaithful, can't really, like, they struggle with it, yeah? Which is no, no judgment. Men and women, there's some that struggle with it. Why do you insist on getting married? Why do you want to get married so bad? I can't understand it. I'll meet so many women that like want to get married, but they still talk to their ex and they still jump from man to man and they just struggle with being faithful. And there's men who have never been faithful to a woman in their life, yet they want to walk down the aisle and profess their love to their whole family. Like, why? Do you know how painful divorce is? Only get married when being faithful is so much easier for you than being unfaithful. When being faithful is just like the easiest thing in the world, then you're ready for marriage. A lot of women today seem more focused on the event than the actual commitment. They dream about the perfect dress, the Instagram-worthy photos, and the attention they'll get for that one day. But after the wedding is over, what happens next? The reality of building a life together is where the real work begins, and unfortunately, many don't seem ready for that part. It's like they're chasing the fantasy of the fairy tale, but forgetting that marriage isn't a one-day spectacle. It's an ongoing partnership that requires effort, sacrifice, and real dedication. And too often, the same women who are obsessed with the wedding day forget that a marriage is about giving just as much as it is about receiving. You can't just show up expecting the man to do everything, whether it's emotional support, financial stability, or even just providing the foundation for the future. Here's where the disconnect really shows. Many of these women want a man who's going to provide them with a lifestyle they can't maintain on their own. They're looking for someone to give them what they're incapable of bringing to the table themselves. But here's the kicker. Men are waking up to this. Men aren't just walking into marriages blindly anymore. They're asking themselves, what am I getting out of this? And when the answer is a woman who's more interested in showing off her ring than actually being a partner, they're opting out. A lot of men today are seeking peace, loyalty, and real partnership. They want someone who's going to build a life with them, not just sit back and expect to be pampered while giving the bare minimum in return. And that's the problem. A lot of women aren't interested in that kind of commitment. They're interested in the status, the attention, and the social validation. That's why so many men are either staying single or, as we've talked about before, looking elsewhere, overseas, or in different cultures where women still value marriage for what it actually is. Marriage isn't just a flashy day with a big party. It's about being there in the trenches with your partner, through the ups and downs, not just for the pictures. And if a woman can't grasp that concept, 
Then, yeah, she's probably not wife material. She's just chasing a wedding, not a marriage. My biggest flex is that my ex of when I was 18 years old goes to my gym right now. And he's the only person who has ever broken up with me. And I've only gotten hotter since. Literally throughout the years, hotter, hotter, hotter. And I look my best now. And I'll probably look even better in five years. But he gets to see me glow up throughout the years and know that he fumbled. <laughs> it's always the same story. She's out here talking about her ex, pretending he's the one who fumbled. But deep down, the truth is he dodged a bullet. Narcissism thinly veiled as confidence is a dangerous game, and men see through it more often than not. She's probably still hung up on him, thinking he's living in regret, when in reality, he's out there living his best life, free from the drama. Let's be real. When a man makes the choice to walk away, it's not a decision he makes lightly. If he's gone, it's because he's done. Men don't play these emotional games. They decide, they move on, and they don't look back. But women? They'll convince themselves that they were the prize, even when their attitude made them completely unattractive. Her looks might be decent, but attitude is everything. And when the mask of confidence is just covering up narcissism, it's a no-win situation for any guy. The fact she's still talking about him says everything. She can't let go. And that's a sign that she's living rent-free in his head. It doesn't mean he fumbled. It means he got out just in time before things got worse. Men don't sit around wondering what their ex is doing. They're too busy enjoying their newfound peace. As soon as someone brings up, my ex, it's game over. He's already moved on. The reality is, her looks are superficial. And while she might be able to turn a few heads, the minute she opens her mouth, her true self shines through. Attitude matters. And if she's toxic, it doesn't matter how good she looks. The guy is lucky he saw the signs and left before he got too deep. He's probably thriving, focusing on his life, career, or next adventure, while she's stuck in the past, wondering what went wrong. At the end of the day, women need to realize that men don't stick around for looks alone. The way you carry yourself, how you treat others, and your attitude towards life all matter. If you're bitter, constantly talking about the past, and masking insecurity with fake confidence, men will walk away every time. And when they do, trust me, they won't be looking back. If a man is ghosting you and you are going crazy, dear God, please, please do this. When a man ghosts you as a female, we have an urge for some reason, something's telling us inside that we need to tell them that we saw something. We saw something with them or we thought that they let us on and we want an explanation. That voice is going to make us want to text him, call him, have any sort of context with him so that we can have some sort of knowledge or explanation for all of this. But no answer is an answer. No response is a big response. Let that sink in. You are not his mother and you are not there to tell him and teach him what he likes and what he wants. Of course, it's normal to feel like you're not good enough and you want that validation from someone. But we need to ask ourselves, why are we letting one single man upset us that much? One single man when there are billions and millions of men on this earth. We all have a choice. And that man had a choice. He had a choice to either explain to you that he is going to go ghost, that something's happening in his life, that you are not the one. Whatever that reason may be for his ghosting, he had a choice to tell you that and be a man. But he chose that easy way out. He chose to just ghost you and never respond. And what on earth does that say about him? Him not respecting your time, him not giving you any explanation to anything, him choosing the easy way out. This man has clearly some sort of issue without being able to be a man and step up to the plate and explain himself, explain himself physically, emotionally, whatever that may be. But this would happen sooner or later in the relationship if you were ever get there. He would take the easy way out. Maybe he'd take the easy way out and do something stupid. Maybe he would take the easy way out again and then ghost you further down the road. If he hopped back in into that conversation and says hello after a month's time or after a year's time, please, girl, do not let him waste any more of your time because if he's choosing the easy way out now without respecting you, he's going to do it again. And let's save ourselves from that. Men don't just ghost women for no reason. 
It's usually because they've already picked up on the signs that she's not interested or isn't reciprocating the effort. Women often think men ghost out of nowhere, but in reality, there's always a reason behind it. When she's not responding or being inconsistent, most guys see that as a clear message. Her lack of enthusiasm says, no, men aren't mind readers, but they understand that when a woman starts pulling away, it's often because she's not invested. It could be the lack of texts, delayed responses, or even just the vibe she gives off. At that point, he's just protecting his time and energy. Why continue chasing someone who clearly doesn't want to be caught? He knows when it's a dead end, and instead of hanging around waiting for things to magically change, he decides to walk away. Now, here's where the disconnect happens. Some women might not realize that their own actions or lack of communication are pushing men away. They might expect him to keep trying or think that playing hard to get will make him chase her more. But most men today don't have time for games. If she's not showing interest, he'll take it as a no and move on. What some women fail to realize is that ghosting isn't always about avoiding responsibility. It's about self-respect. A man isn't going to sit there waiting for breadcrumbs or mixed signals. He's not going to wait around to be someone's backup plan. He knows his value. And if she's not showing him that she's genuinely interested, he's out. Men get rejected all the time. They're used to it. But what they won't tolerate is wasting time on someone who doesn't give them the same energy they're putting in. So if she's acting cold, unresponsive, or disinterested, she can't be surprised when he ghosts her. He's just doing what any reasonable person would do, protecting his own peace and walking away from a situation that's not going anywhere. Why are men mean? They don't like us, honey. Like, I don't understand what you don't understand. They don't like us. It's, it's okay. The sooner that you realize that, it's freeing. Men hate us. They don't like us. They hate us. They hate, like, hate us. <laughs> Here's the thing. When men set boundaries, a lot of women mistake it for being mean or not liking them. But the truth is, having boundaries is about self-respect, not about being cold or unkind. It's a way for men to protect their time, energy, and emotional well-being. Unfortunately, many women confuse these boundaries with rejection or a lack of interest, when in reality, it's just a man standing up for himself. Women are used to men bending over backward to accommodate their needs and wants, but when a man draws a line, it disrupts that expectation. Instead of seeing it for what it is, healthy and necessary, they sometimes label him as harsh or uncaring. But why should a man always have to put his own needs aside? If a woman can have standards, why can't a man? The double standard here is real. Women are encouraged to have boundaries, to know their worth, and to demand respect. But when a man does the same, it's suddenly a problem. He's seen as difficult, unkind, or even emotionally unavailable. But the reality is, men are tired of being doormats. They're tired of constantly giving while getting little in return. So, when a man sets a boundary, it's not because he's mean. It's because he's protecting himself from being taken advantage of. Let's be real. Boundaries are a good thing. They create balance in a relationship and prevent resentment from building up. Men who set boundaries are actually showing they value themselves and their time. Yet, some women take it personally, as if a man's decision to have limits means he's against them. But that's far from the truth. A man who knows what he will and won't tolerate is simply saying, I respect myself, and I deserve the same respect in return. But here's where the blame really falls on women. Too often, they expect men to cater to their every whim without ever considering the man's own needs. They want men to be available whenever they feel like it, to always say yes, and to never assert their own desires. But when a man finally does, it becomes a personal offense, like his boundaries are an attack on her. It's not about being mean. It's about being clear. Men have every right to set standards for how they want to be treated, just as women do. And until women start understanding that boundaries are not a reflection of disinterest but of self-worth, the misunderstanding will continue. Men aren't here to constantly prove themselves or sacrifice their peace. When a man says, this is what I need, and this is what I won't tolerate, he's simply setting the foundation for a healthy, balanced relationship. 
At the end of the day, women need to stop mistaking boundaries for being mean. Men who set limits are not the enemy. They're just done with the one-sided effort. Respect goes both ways, and it's time for women to realize that men's boundaries are just as valid as their own.